is Chris the Nightmare Ariola, and you're watching Mission Boxing Today on YouTube. Heavyweight boxing fans, what's the deal? All right, man, so let's switch it up, and let's talk about that cruiserweight tournament that they got going on that I think is an excellent idea. Um, the only thing, though, the only thing I have about it, though, my only knock on it, is I wish Dennis Lebedev was a part of the tournament, being that he does still hold on to that super WBA title. I know Dorticos has the, uh, was it the regular WBA title? Um, but you need the super to become undisputed. And I know the Le the Lebedev won his most recent fight against Flanagan, but he did lose to Gassiev. He lost his IBF title that night. That WBA super was not on the line. So I really, you know, it's kind of hard for me to look at Lebedev as the champion. It's like, dude, you lost. You know what I mean? It's like Gassiev should have been the unified champion. But regardless of that, let's get to this uh, story that I've seen on Boxing Scene. And they just released a date for one of the quarterfinal matches. And that's Marius Breedis, uh, my second favorite in the tournament. I have Usyk and then Breedis. Um, but yeah, Marius Breedis will be fighting Mike Perez September 30th in Latvia. So Breedis will be getting a home fight. And we know Breedis is the WBC Cruiserweight Champion. He got elevated once Tony Bellew decided to uh, go up and fight David Head Heavyweight. The WBC placed uh, Tony Bellew as champion emeritus. That means if he was to drop back down to cruiserweight at WBC, he will get a um, title shot, all right? So the elevated Breedis, all right? So here we go. Style breakdown of the fight. Perez, you know, he dropped down to cruiserweight. He just had a fight, I believe it was last month or the month before that, but he fought a guy named Biziak, knocked him out in like 20-something seconds, uh, so he really didn't see much. What you did get to see is Perez's new body, right? He has a six-pack. You can see definition in his forearms, in his um, biceps, in his shoulders. You know what I mean? He's looking cut up. You know, he lost, he, shit, the Pavekin fight, he weighed 240 pounds. So now, he, you know, so he's cut like 40 pounds. One thing I will say is when he took that fight last month or the month before that, uh, whenever that fight was, his most recent one, um, he had been out of the ring since the Pavekin loss in 2015. So he has gradually been staying in shape, cutting weight. It's not like he did all this in four months. You know what I mean? So I will, that is a plus. My thing though is when, when guys do stuff like this and Chris Berg comes to mind, when he tried to drop down a light heavyweight and fight Sean George on ESPN years ago. Um, I know it's two different fighters, two different circumstances. But when I see things like this, man, I just don't look at, man, look at the great shape he's in. Like, look at his body. I always think about how is his chin going to hold up when he gets in a rough fight. And how is his legs? I know his abs look great. And, you know, his uh, definition of his muscles on his um, body. But how is his legs going to hold up? And that's my concern with Mike Perez making this move. He looks he looks phenomenal. So I guess we'll see, right, September 30th. But um, Breedis is somebody that can mix it up, man. He uh, can fight on the inside. You know, he can have a rough and tumble fight with you. You know, if you want to grab and bang and, you know, grab with your left arm and fight with your right arm, that type of thing, he can fight you like that, you know. Um, and he can get the best of opponents fighting like that. So he's used to a rough house fight. I think he can pro possibly rough Perez up. You know, test those legs, man. Let's really see how great a shape his legs are in. You know what I mean? Um, push him back. I know Perez is the type of guy, though, if you put pressure on him, Perez had his fair share of fights with Pavekin, Jennings, uh, Takam, guys at heavyweight. You know, if you bring the fight to him, he, he will come out firing. You know what I mean? Perez likes to pot shot, slick fighter, wants to slip punches and hit you with straight lefts and counters and... You know what I mean? He's well, he's one of those type of guys. Uh, he was always a shorter heavyweight, so he, you know, kind of make himself shorter, ducking and bend. You know, that type of defense, rolling and catching and slipping and ducking. Uh, Breedis knows how to place his punch as well. He can fight off the back foot. I've seen him knock Manuel Char out cold off the back foot at heavyweight, actually. Um, you know, he's a quick puncher. He can place his punches well. He's a good combination puncher. Uh, I think he can match Perez when it comes for faint to faint and pop shot. And at this stage, I think he can match him. And I think if Perez try to apply any type of pressure, I think Breedis can slip his shots and land powerful um, counters. You know, and if they fight at a, a even distance where they're just standing there in front of each other trying to slip and roll and all that, 
I'll give Breedis the edge. I, I I think he is the um I I say he's the harder puncher just based on their KO percentages. I, I will say Breedis is the harder puncher and what I seen him do to Manuel Char, man. That was just crazy. That was a crazy knockout, man. That was ugly. You know, so I'm a favorite Marius Breedis in this fight. Uh and I'm gonna go, you know what? I'm gonna go Breedis by stoppage. I think Breedis is gonna stop him, man. I'm thinking Breedis is gonna stop him. I, I could be wrong. I guess we'll see, right? In September. But um I'ma say that Perez dropping down like this and I think it'll hinder him. Being that he didn't get any work with the busy at guy. Not that Perez is some new kid on the block that needs some experience. It's just that he may need some experience fighting at this new weight with his new body. You know what I mean? Like I said, he it's not like he lost all his weight and got down in three months. He's been doing, you know, he's been working on his body since he's been out since the Pavekin fight that was in 2015. I understand that. But I think it's probably playing tricks on him, man. I think his body's going to play tricks on him come fight night. And I think Breedis is going to uh, kind of fight a, a well-rounded fight. I think he's going to try to rough him up a little bit on the inside. Um try to take the fight out of him, you know what I mean? Then he'll have the home crowd, the hometown crowd on his side too, so he'll be extra motivated for this. And, you know, I expect Perez to be motivated as well. I mean, you're, you're fighting in this great tournament, and you're, you're fighting for a world title. Picture that, right? He loses the Pavekin, comes back, fights a guy we never heard of, beats him in 20 seconds. His next fight, he's fighting for a world title. You know, so maybe is too much too soon for him as far as coming back right away. You know what I mean? Since the Pavekin loss and then he beat this dude um, or the Busy Act dude and then now he's in position to fight for a world title. But stylistically, though, I, I see Breedis winning this fight. Um, and I'm going to go by, I'm going to say Breedis by stoppage. I, you know, um, yeah, I'm going to go Breedis by stoppage, man. It's a hell of a matchup, though. But you guys let me know what you think in the comment section about this fight. I'm out.